paper with the eraser, that type of thing from object rendering, and this paper having some texture. So I'm just going to start off with this vertical line that sets up this square. These are approximately at 30 degree angles. So I'm just kind of sketching it from there. Whether I use the photograph reference, that's going to help. And depending on the length and the width of this, that's establishing this space. So it's kind of building that part up. I need these two walls in order to complete the finished part. And it kind of builds itself up from that point open. And depending on which one you choose, which photograph you choose, or if you just look at the drawing, that's fine. But it's trying to get you to think of some different angles, depending on which one you, you uh, use as a model. But again, from an isometric point of view, you're trying to um, create the drawing that's going to have the most information given to it. So this part that's cut out is just vertical. In order to find out this section, it's the same parallel line <clears throat> coming this direction. And in order to find the part that's hidden, that's this piece right over here. So it's almost matching itself up with this line. And then once you see it, <clears throat> there's the lines. And like I said, you're trying to then shade this part, giving it a light source. In this case, I'm going with the form, with the shading, kind of giving that the second value. So I'm going to make the top parts have the light, and this side over here be the darkest. So just kind of building that part up. <clears throat> and you'll feel the texture on this paper. I have it on my sketchbook, so it makes it a little softer to draw. And you'll notice that the texture gives a little bit more light, no matter how hard I push, unless I try to eliminate the texture. But along this edge is where it's going to be the darkest for the darkest value. And really trying to find that piece and letting it, just like the gradation tone, on the computer, you're trying to build that up from a dark to a light. Same with this side, wherever that edge starts to show, have it go dark to light, but this is kind of in the medium range on this side of the, of the shape. So from this part out, kind of blends into here. And whether or not I put a tone or something behind this, this is the lightest value, but just from the back edge, I'm just gonna keep it about a quarter tone and let that blend in self right to the front. So you can kind of get this part. This one may have a cast shadow to it. It also, in the photo, is going to have a little reflected light into that. So I'm going to put some of that in there. So for the beginning, it's not too far. I'm trying to lose the line <clears throat> and then essentially keep going back in to heavy this up. Once I see how dark these are, I start to build this value up. And pushing this part. So just kind of and again, letting it blend in, finding that edge, letting this blend in. And see how far at the base of this, it's going to be a cast shadow. Now, if the light's coming from the left, <clears throat> and this may be casting a shadow this direction from this corner. And actually from the corner you can't see, which is the hidden line down here. If you extend these two lines, you'll see the point. And that's where that's coming across. So if this was coming down, this line would be here for the shadow. It would go back a little bit to this point and then extend itself and go to here and back. So you can kind of see where this translates itself. And again, just kind of lightly placing it in there. This gets a little tricky the further <clears throat> intricate the shape is. And then from this base out, it's going to be dark to light, and what they call ambient light is softening the edges all the way around <clears throat> into the distance, so you want to kind of keep that going. And again, the texture is kind of helping you along with the keeping it kind of airy and light until I really go back in and darken this up right on the dark side of this one. So see if you can, first of all, plot it out with the lines and then slowly build the shading up. And again, you're trying to, you're using the line initially to help you plot out the drawing and then you're kind of losing it as you go around from it, finding the edges to it. And this is very much like a gradient fill, so finding those sections there.
putting that right there. So see if you can't find those edges. You might have to go back and find them again like I just did there. <clears throat> and this is a light gradated tone right there to take it off. And again, these are all parallel uh, line segments that you come up with. And incorporate a little bit of a straight line here. <clears throat> you know, I can push this against the edge, makes it a little easier. <clears throat> Rotating the paper, finding this edge. And this way, pushing the opposite direction. And you'll see that you'll the darker you get, you'll lose the texture to it. <clears throat> said, as you lose some of the line, just go back and find that edge. <clears throat> and you have your mechanical pencil that I gave you that you can use too as well. Gives it different. As you get that uh, set up, you can take your eraser and create a highlight edge to this part. You can even use a straight edge against it. It brings that piece right up there. You can use it to clean up some of the back, back of this too.